everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Karina and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be presenting you with yet another empties video. So empties of course happen about once a month. I'm very pleased that I've been able to kind of keep up with that thus far. And we're gonna be talking through what I have worked on since I last filmed my empties video, which would have been pretty much exactly a, just about a month ago. And you guys, Oh, there's so much stuff. There is so much stuff in this box. Things that are in Project Pans, lots of things that aren't in Project Pans, so always excited to check out. Um, and the dollar value. I am shocked. Why? Uh, if you haven't seen my last update, I highly recommend you checking it out. At the end of that video, I kind of talked through some initial thoughts of you know, the consumption of the items, the price tags associated with that consumption, and we're going big once again. This is another high value empties videos and there's a couple items in here in particular that are big ticket items. Now if you hadn't caught my intro of course make sure you check that out. I talk about the pricing for all of this. Of course all of this is in going to be in Canadian dollars but I do not pay full price for all of these things and I calculate the retail value not necessarily what I paid for said items. So obviously what I paid for these is way less um, but but still really high value. So I've got a good variety of items in this box today. Most of it is skincare. So I'm going to actually save the skincare section for the last one, just because that's a huge bulk of items plus a huge bulk of this, of this uh, value of this box. So without further ado, let's just dive in. And the very first thing I want to talk about is something, is something that I'm not going to add into my total values of it. But I just did want to mention it because I'm considering it a done product. Kind of awkward, but it's a sponge. Um, this one, I forget what the brand of it was. It's just your basic kind of sponge here. Um, I got it as part of a four set on BoxyCharm and like their pop-up store add-ons, whatever it was called at that particular point. I got a set of four sponges, all different shapes for five USD, and I'm still working on them. Um, I'm on my last sponge right now, but this is the one I finished up. I basically use them until, like, I, I do clean them, obviously. Uh, this one's not particularly clean at the moment, but, like, when it starts getting some of that texture breakdown, when it's getting harder to feel like it's actually getting clean, especially down on the bottom, that's what I'm going to call these things done. Again, not counting this towards my empties, but I did just want to mention it because I used it and now I'm not going to be able to use it anymore. Next category I want to talk about is going to be a very quick one. Um, not a whole lot to talk about here, which is my nail polish category. So if you got my project polish update, you will note that I did finish this one off. Um, just the Color Institute. It doesn't have a name. You can see my little marks right there. Um, now the problem with this is pricing doesn't really exist for this because a lot of Color Institute, they come in these kits, right? So you get like five or six nail polishes, you get the dryer, you get all these tool things. This one came as a gift many, many Christmases ago. So I don't actually know what the value of this is. Um, I would put down $2 because again, you can get these whole sets fairly cheap. It's hard to calculate what's a polish cost versus tools versus everything else. So I just went super low with this. Probably not at all accurate, but but if you guys know how to find polish prices for these kind of things. So uh, Color Institute and also Color Workshop, because I do have some of those as well, which work on the same kind of idea. That'd be great. I would love to know. But this was my only nail polish empty that I hadn't updated yet. Um, so of course, I do try to make sure I'm not featuring anything in my empties that hasn't been featured in my uh, any of my project pans, because spoilers and I don't want to forget things or misplace them so I have finished other things but you're gonna have to wait for the next empties to see those or checking out my project project pan updates but that's my nail polish empty it is done two things in the body care category uh, so let's start off with this guy so this is the Neutrogena. This is the Mineral Ultra Sheer SPF 50. It's their dry touch face and body stick. Now, if you have caught some of my other videos, you will know I went down on a Caribbean vacation with my husband over the February break. Um, so I had filmed my previous empties right before that trip. 
And me being silly, because I do have another of these ready to go in my backlog, which was the one I meant to grab before the trip. And instead I grabbed this one, which as you can see is completely used up. You got the cap in there as well. Um, there wasn't very much left in this one. So we made it to day like three of a eight day trip altogether. So we had to buy sunscreen on the cruise ship, which of course was very expensive, but it seems like a good sunscreen and my husband likes that one way more. I enjoy the stick format because of ease of application and I have a hard time. So if you guys have any tips or tricks on this, please let me know in the comments down below how to reapply enough SPF over a full face of makeup because I wear a full face basically every day and we're talking like everything, right? Primers, foundations, concealers, blush, bronze, highlight, powder and cream products. Like I, I, I have a lot of stuff on my face. And obviously if you're spending all that time putting all this makeup on your face, you want it to stay on the face, but you also need to be reapplying your SPF every two hours, which I'm very bad at. And we burned a little bit because we didn't reapply our SPF as often as we needed to. So if you have any tips or tricks, please let me know down below. So I do like sticks. They seem to be okay. Um, I do prefer this on my body rather than like a lotion, just cause lotions tend to be a little bit on the messy side. Um, but we got this one done. My husband wasn't a big fan of this one. He prefers the lotion type. Um, it also is an SPF of 50, which is basically the only thing I try to use. Obviously any SPF is better than no SPF, but in my brain it's like, well, if I'm gonna do SPF, it's gotta be 50, so actually used up an SPF, good start. Gotta get more in the habit of using these kind of products. And of course, this was my second empty in the body category. So this is the Bath & Body Works. This is the Butterfly Ultimate Hydration Body Cream with Hyaluronic Acid. The notes of this were raspberry nectar, iris petals, and airy vanilla. Hmm, still smells very nice. I mean, it is cleared out. It is very empty. So I, I cut into these tubes. I scrape out everything I can. It still smells so nice. I do enjoy it. Um, not my favorite scent because raspberry, like I prefer if we're going with citrus route, things like strawberry, mandarin, mango, but I did enjoy this particular scent. I thought the packaging was really cute. It was in my Finish 7 by Spring project. So this was done by the first update. So this was a very nice product and I did enjoy it. And I have tons of other Bath & Body Works, both lotions and creams. Let's get into some makeup items. I do have a few of them. Most of these were from Project Pans. And guys, if you saw my lip service update, I finished three lip products. So that was probably gonna be my most exciting update in the entire project because I have a hard time finishing lip products but I did three in one month. So let's work through these. The first one was this Mary Kay lip liner. This was in the shade Light Nude. Um, obviously there is nothing left in there. The last little bit kind of fell out on me. Um, this pencil broke on me like three times when I was using it. It went very quickly. The color was nice, but wasn't super long lasting. And I did apply it over like the entire lip. I don't just line the lips. So I got a total of 21 uses on it, which at a $16 price tag for a regular price, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, not great, not great at all. So I'm, as I've mentioned in that update, I'm very motivated to get out all of my other American lip liners. So hopefully you'll see those in empty soon. There's two more of them I need to work through. I also finished up the Bite. So this was their creamy matte crayon. Yeah, the Power Move Creamy Matte Lip Crayon and I see a smash. Um, I had been working on this guy for about a year. It is all level in there. As I mentioned, I don't dig out lip products. I find that very messy, inconvenient, all of that kind of stuff. Bite, of course, doesn't exist anymore and because their products are more on the food side, or at least they were on like the food safe side, I did want to prioritize using this because I didn't want it to go bad. And it wasn't bad, right? It did 
transfer a little bit. So what I would do is I would apply it. I would blot it down so it didn't transfer as bad. I'd still sometimes get a little bit down here. So if you have any tips on how to avoid transfer to right down here, I would also really appreciate that in the comments down below. But it was very long lasting. The color stayed, it faded nicely if you wore it that long. Um, so although it piqued my interest, I don't know, even if the brand still existed, I would want to buy more of these ones. Again, because it, I want something that does last a long time, which this does pretty well, but I also don't want it to transfer, and this one did transfer to, like, if you drank anything, did it get all over your cup or your mug, you'd still have a lot of color on your lip, but it transferred a bit, even with, if you blotted it, again, not as bad. But I got this item done. It came to me in a boxy charm. So the color was, it was a bit of a brighter, more intense color. So my first couple of uh, videos, right? So I had a lot of videos where I would actually wear this once you can see it in action in other videos. But this one's done. This was the third lip item. So this was the CoverGirl Smoochies Lip Balm Lipstick thing in the shade hashtag text me. Um, as you guys can see, right, again, it's all flush. It scrapes the lips. If you roll it all the way down, you can kind of see how far down that goes. This must be, well, obviously, it's a discontinued item, um, but it's probably a fair amount discontinued. Like, I couldn't find a price on this at all, anywhere, except on eBay, where apparently this can go for, like, $400. It wasn't that great. I don't know why anyone would pay $400 for this thing. So am I missing something about this? Was there something special about this launch? It was fine. It gave good color. It was nourishing on the lip. Didn't last very long. And it also transferred quite a lot. But it was a fine product. Decent. Not one I would have repurchased anyway. But I can't because it's discontinued. And of course, if you saw my partners in cream update, then this guy is familiar. So of course, this is the Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Primer Riser. It is back with the older packaging because they have repackaged all of this stuff, which does make it a little bit harder to find an accurate price. So I assume it's the same price. Leave me a comment down below if it wasn't. And it was fine. It was okay. It was definitely a very hydrating primer, which... My skin is on the normal side, sometimes getting a little bit dry. Generally, though, I would prefer to have the extra hydration coming in my moisturizer, so using something more heavy-duty there, and then using a primer for something other than hydration. But I am glad I tried it. It was a decent item. Not one I would buy again, but yeah. good. And finally, I have an empty from the Caribbean vacation. So I do have a video posted where I talked through the skincare, makeup, body care items that I was going to take down to the Caribbean with me. And that would, of course, deviate a lot from the regularly scheduled programming of my skincare, makeup, body care, all of that good stuff. Because again, traveling, you want smaller things so it doesn't take up as much space, it's a little bit more convenient and in case something happens then you still have all of your regular full-size stuff. So I had taken down with me this little guy. So this, of course, is the Milk. It's the Hydro Grip Primer. It came in one of these Sephora kits. So I have a whole bunch of them that I've gone over time. It has four milliliters of product in it. I used this every day that we were on the trip. Um, so the Saturday when we left, I had used my regular primer because I have this pack ready to go. So I used this Sunday to Sunday every day. And then I still had another week, I think, where I was using this once we got back from the trip to make sure I got it finished up because I didn't want to have a little bit of primer left over. So we had about two weeks out of this little sample size and it did move fast. like. Basically, after every pump, which you use one pump over your whole face, like I saw that movement. So great from a Project Pan perspective. Again, only four mLs in here. I'm glad I tried it. I would be curious to test out the Elf Power Grip Primer, which is supposed to be a dupe for this. Sometimes I thought it helped. So there were some days, especially down in the Caribbean when it was hot, where 
I thought this was making a difference on the longevity of my makeup. It also could have been I had a small travel size of the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, so I don't really know which one it was. Whoops. But it wasn't consistent enough. It wasn't like every day. It was like, yes, one of these items is really contributing to the longevity, which is something I want in my primer and my setting spray. So glad to try it, but probably would not buy the full price of this guy. All right, that is gonna bring us now to the skincare category. I've got so much stuff in front of me. I've got some big ticket items in front of me. I've got sample sizes in front of me. We've got lots to talk about, so buckle up. I don't even know where to start first. Uh, let's start with some of the more not as many uses out of it, and then we'll kind of build our way up. I think that seems like a good strategy. So let's start off with this guy here. Um, so this is the OK. This is their Night Rescue Heel Patches. Um, so Night Relief. So they go right there on your heel. You get two pairs, so four patches in total. And uh, they were fine. I don't think I put them on the best way because they, you know, they weren't as nice and smooth and kind of peeled a little bit. It, they, in terms of what they did, yes, my skin felt a little bit better the next day, but then that was it, right? So there wasn't anything long lasting that I saw with these. And again, these are fairly expensive for what they are, right? So. I didn't buy these myself, but I am glad I tried them, and meh, meh. Face mask that I finished up last month, this is the Glam Glow. This is their Glow Lace Radiance Boosting Hydration Sheet Mask. Again, I'm not huge on sheet masks. I find, you know, it's a lot of packaging. I prefer something that comes in a tub or a squeezy tube. Sheet masks in particular also have that extra feature, let's call it, of making you feel like a serial killer just by having that mask on your face. Not the most flattering appearance, but at least with this mask you looked like a, a little bit of an elevated, a little bit more of a classy serial killer because you did actually have like these lines, these silver patterns all throughout the sheet mask. Still a sheet mask though. So a lot of good claims with it, right? It is it has hyaluronic acid, green tea, and caffeine in it. It is very hydrating. Um, I think I noticed a little bit of that radiance boost that it was talking about. Again, with a sheet mask, it's not going to be that long term. This came to me in a boxy charm. I do have another glam glow mask that came with it in a boxy charm, but it is expensive. It's expensive. So no, I'm not going to buy sheet masks generally. Like sometimes I buy them when they're like less than a dollar per sheet mask because they're on clear out or something like that. Then I might buy a sheet mask, but otherwise, no. I enjoyed it as a sheet mask, but no. All right, let's get into a whole bunch of little samples. So these were all Caribbean samples I took down with me. Uh, let's start with the Tula. Uh, so this is the Tula Skincare 24-7 Hydrating Day and Night Cream. Uh, there was two grams of product in here, and I started this one, let's see, I used it both day and night for a few days slash nights to get it used up, so I got a few uses out of it, and it was fine. Yeah, that's all I got to say about it. There wasn't anything super special in Yum Skincare. You do have to use it for a while to see any of the results. But this one is supposed to be lightweight. I think it was non-greasy, yes. Um, it did provide hydration, it's supposed to make your skin more supple, more glowy, more dewy, which I do like that stuff. That's kind of what I go for with my skincare. But was I excited to use this product? No. But I used it and it was fine. I was, however, very excited to try this out. This is the Ole Henderson. This is the Banana Bright Vitamin C Serum. It only had 1.5 milliliters of product in there. This is expensive. This is expensive. So when you do the price breakdown, these you sample, which I got maybe three days out of, because again, it's kind of hard to know how much you need. This has a value of $4.60. 
Yeah, four dollars and sixty cents. Like that's just mind boggling. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Was my curiosity piqued? Yes. Did I look at the full size item? Yes. And thought, I think I'm going to try the Glow Recipe stuff first because I really love Glow Recipe and they are way cheaper and they do have vitamin C stuff with it. But besides being crazy expensive, it felt really nice. It's got a bit of a citrus scent. I'm trying to smell the last little remnants in here. I enjoyed the experience. It got me interested. I was excited to try it. But that's a high price tag. And vitamin C is supposed to be really, really good. I would like to have something a little bit more solid with my vitamin C in my routine. But I think I'm going to try Glow Recipe, recipe first. Because that's a brand I love. And it's cheaper. Finally, of course, we have, uh, and this is just some of the samples, or at least the, the, these kind of samples. So don't worry, there's lots more skincare. This is the Josie Marin. This is their Pro Retinol Eye Cream. There is only two milliliters. Yeah, two milliliters of sample in here. And when I did my video for what I was going to take with me, I put three of these in. And I only used one. This product went far. And so especially, you know, the first couple of times when you're trying to use it and you're like trying to squeeze it out, you can kind of see that coloring right there. It was very much this light pink color. So you're trying to squeeze it out. And of course, it's hard to sometimes control things with this packet. Um, you should take too much. It's like, well, get really applied. So there were some days where I had a lot of eye cream going on. But it was very thick, very hydrating. It blended in quite well. You didn't have to work very hard for it. And it went far. And I know eye creams are ridiculously expensive. And there's a lot of debate on the value of an eye cream. A lot of ingredients are similar to the moisturizers. But this is one that I could see potentially making a difference for people because it is thicker, richer, it was a lovely experience. It does have retinol in here. When you do break down the price tag, again, this is another one that was kind of on the ridiculous side. This little sample is worth $8.60. But I use this morning and night, and I'm still using it when we got back. So I think I got about a week and a half of use from it. And again, that was some days where I was like, you know, got way too much out or towards the end of the trip I was like well, I don't really want to take this pack home that still has product in it which I ended up doing anyway so I was really applying it so is it expensive yes but I did see a did I see a difference I don't know if I saw a difference but I saw the potential for it having that difference with long-term use so this actually intrigued me because I had like no impression really of this brand or this product and it was just kind of a mass sample for me but this piped my interest this piped my interest so a consideration for the future since we're on the topic of stupid expensive samples let's talk about this one um i'm not going to be breaking down the prices for all of these it's just for some of these items So you'll see, you can see already how this value is escalating so high. But anyway, this is the philosophy. This is the Ultimate Miracle Worker Fix Facial Serum Roller Uplift and Firm. There is three, three milliliters of sample in here. And this little guy comes to a value. Of course, you can take the full size, divide the price by how many mLs are in it, apply it to this guy. Nine dollars and eighty cents. This little thing's ten bucks, essentially. No, no. Like, yeah, you can't even get anything else out. And did I notice anything? Again, common disclaimer: skincare. You're not necessarily going to see anything right away. But like the Josie Marin, which was also stupid expensive, but all eye creams especially are. I saw at least the potential with this. I saw the potential with the Ole Henderson. This? Not really. Not really. I used it. It was fine. Um, 
Yeah, sometimes the philosophy ones have a bit of a scent to it. This one didn't really have too much of a scent to it or nothing that annoyed me. But is it worth it? No! No! What? Well, no! One more tiny little squeezy tube. This, this one. This. This one actually intrigues me. Now, I have, as I mentioned, more normal skin. I like that dewy, luminous, glowy, especially glow with the thin, radiant look. Like, that's just what I go for. That's what I want out of my skincare and my makeup. Is this product going to do it? No, but I knew that going in because this is the Clarins. This is the Reboost. This is their um, Imperfections Mattifying Hydrating Blemish Gel. So this is a product designed for more of an oily skin type, right? That's just what it is. And that's fine. I knew that going in, but this was nice. I enjoyed this, right? If I had more of an oilier skin type and I preferred a mattified look, because if you want to mattify, like this does give a mattified look just with the moisturizer. If that's what you're going for, then this is great. This is wonderful. Only five milliliters of product in here, so not a whole lot. But even within just those five milliliters, like one, this lasted a pretty long time. It was pretty substantial. And that was for the whole face. And it was pleasant to work with. It didn't have a bad smell or anything. Yeah, there's a bit of a smell there. So yeah, this was hydrating. This felt nice on the skin. It absorbed well. We didn't have a bad scent to it. Again, it is still scented, but it was nice. And it does mattify. Like, it does do it, but giving it a very blurred, maybe blurred, mattified appearance. I don't have a ton of experience with mattifying stuff, but that's kind of the impression I got. And it was lovely. I enjoyed it. And enough so that I was like, if that was my skin type or that was the look I was going for, yeah, I might pick that up. I was impressed. So we've already gone through like the kind of sachet foil sample sizes. We've gone through some small squeezy tubes. Well, let's go through this kind of product now, the kind of things in little tubs. Um, and this, of course, is a little sample of the Algenis. This is their Triple Algae Eye Renewal Balm. It came again in one of these Sephora kits, and it was pretty nice. I enjoyed it. So I used this. Uh, I've been a little bit extra with the eye area, so uh, I'll go in with like a balm or an eye serum or something apply that and then I'll go in with like an eye cream or a moisturizer and the reason why I used this one is because when I got it right the lid I think was like this so not completely sealed or it may have popped off I don't remember but that made me prioritize it because I didn't want it to be dried out even though I do have a full size of this in my collection that I received quite a while ago from BoxyCharm as a choice item forever ago so I am excited that I do have another of these still in my collection. I enjoyed the use of it. Did I notice a difference? Maybe. It's so hard to really notice big differences unless something is either super amazing or it's really fixing a problem or it's super terrible. So sorry, I'm not the most detailed reviewer for this stuff, but I enjoyed it. And hopefully when I work through the full size sample, because this one was only 5 mLs, but the 5 mLs lasted a long, long time. So the full size will last even longer. Also in a project pan was this guy. So this is the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. This has 15 mLs, or it had 15 milliliters in it. And um, this took a long time. Like... I was surprised by how far this went. I was using it day and night at one point to make sure it was done for when I wanted it to be done in one of my projects because it went so far and for so long. It was a nice cream. It was very hydrating. It did lots of good things. I liked that it had all these peptides in it, so that's great. 
but it is the kind of product, and this is kind of what I felt like with the Tula sample too. It's one of those products where, you know, it just feels like skincare. Does that make sense if I say that? Where it feels like, yes, this is my moisturizer. I need to use it. It feels nice. But it's not about that experience of the skincare. And that's really what I'm looking for. Like, I want it all with my skincare. I want the product to be great. I want the packaging to be easy to use. I want good formulas, good ingredients, good price points. I want it to do stuff for my skin. And I want to enjoy the experience of using it, which again is one of the reasons why I really like brands like Little Recipe, because you get that experience with it. This was good. But it didn't have that experience component, right? It just even looks like a basic tub of moisturizer. So it was fine. I enjoyed it. Am I going to be running out to buy this? No. Am I curious about the brand? Sure. Am I particularly going to be looking through their stuff, though, because based on this product? Also, no. But it was good. And if that's what you're looking for, just a basic moisturizer, if these ingredients work for you, then great. It's a good one. Another item, and this is the last one that was a Caribbean item. Hopefully I'll have more of those in future empties, but now I'm kind of, I'm splitting time or just don't, or more so focusing on Project Pan items once again. So we'll see when those other items make it in. But the last one, of course, was the Pixie. Uh, this is their Glow Tonic Exfoliating Toner. Uh, this had 40 mLs in it. But most of this, in all honesty, was used last year um so when i took it down to the caribbean like we were like way down here like really low on the bottom of this my husband used this in the caribbean um he's not the best at doing a skin here he tends to do it like every second day or so so after he showers um we're working on getting him up to every day and then maybe eventually twice a day but he would use this a little bit. I would use this one morning and night. It's gentle enough to do that. Um, when I was using it last year, I tended to use this one just at night. And then I used a different toner in the morning. We got probably about two weeks left in here. So a week on the Caribbean on vacation and about a week using it once a day, I think it was. Um, just to get it finished off because I wanted to have to empty like there was this tiny little bit and there's still a tiny little bit you can see it there but I just cannot get that out at all I do have a full size of this item in my back stock and it's a fine toner it's good let's talk about an item that I don't like and these last three items are more expensive um, and this one you saw it in a project pan and uh, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. no, I do not like this item. And I'm also not very interested in the brand either. So based on this experience, it's like, no, take that away, please. And of course, that is this guy. So this is the Nuco. This is the pill all-in-one serum. And on paper, this sounds great, right? It has HA, vitamin C, HA, great. Um, you can use this morning and night. You're supposed to use two pumps, which seemed like a lot. I think I was using one to one and a half kind of pending. And what I've heard as well is like, oh, no. Mm -mm. If it smells bad, that means you got some really good ingredients in there. But again, you have to have a good experience. Otherwise, I'm not going to want to use it. And then I won't use it. And this thing is stupid expensive. This came to me in a boxy charm, so again, didn't pay the full price for this, and I would not, would not. So, boxy charm, this is eighty-five dollars USD, which translates to about a hundred and fifteen Canadian. So no, no, no. Um, I had this much left when I rolled it into my project, and I was pretty done with it at that point. So when we got to about here, like. I think I still did use it on my face, but I was like, you know, let's get it on the neck so I don't have to deal with that scent, right? Just, especially because it's on your face. Like, you kind of can't not smell something if it's on your face. So I do not like this. Did it do stuff? Maybe. But again, ew. Ew. no, 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 no. This next item, also expensive, 
one I used for so, so long. I used this for so long, but it's finally done. And that was shiny blinding you. Yeah, hard to see. Um, this is the Mary Kay. This is the TimeWise Repair. This is the Revealing Radiance Facial Peel. Now, this is a nice product. I do enjoy it. It is like a chemical peel. You put it on for about 10 minutes and it feels good. And like my husband was even using this one towards the end because he noticed a difference in his oily skin because it kind of like, I don't want to say it's like it ate away at it, but it helped clean it all off and it just, it felt good, okay? It's not tangling, it's not crazy, but it's expensive. Uh, so this retails for $70, which is a lot, but that being said, it's a nice product and oh, does it last? Like it lasts. Like I would use, like I can't get into the actual packaging to like scrape anything, but you have the pump here and I would use two pumps of this and I would put it all over my face and I've had it for years, years. So initially I was using it kind of on and off and I did that for years. And then when I started getting a little bit more serious about my masking, now when was that? I don't even remember now. I want to say it was last year sometime, probably earlier in the year. So maybe about a year ago when I started getting more serious into masking, I was starting to do my own, like, because this was all obviously before YouTube, I did a uh, tracking of how many makeup items I used up. I tracked how many skincare items I used up. I tracked how many nail polishes I used up. I was doing all of that on my own. And so I was using up a lot of things, including masks, because I was getting more consistent with my masks. So I would have a couple different ones open at a time. I would have a charcoal mask. I would have this one to be kind of my exfoliating, peely type of mask. And I had some clay masks open because I had them. This was in from the beginning because it was obviously open and it obviously had some more use on it. But I went through, I think it was like, I'm thinking about my third charcoal mask since I started doing more consistent masking and on my third clay mask. And then I've just finished this one over the course of last month, like shortly after we got back from the Caribbean. It's like very end of April, early March. Finally finished it. And there's only 48 grams in here. Like, so like obviously charcoal mask where you have to get that a little bit more layered up depending on the formula, right? That has like 80 grams in it. It's like, or, like they're big masks that I'm finishing. I finally, finally got through this one. Very expensive, but the product is nice. I do enjoy it. There seems to be some good results from it. Um, it's a 10 minute mask, easy to wash off. There's no problems with either application or removal. And it lasted so long. Now I do have another of these in my back stock. Um, I do want to use some other items before I get to it, but yeah, it's a nice item. It's a nice product. We're almost there, guys. We have one last item to discuss. This was also a BoxyCharm item, and uh, it, it's, it's expensive. This was a choice item, again, quite a long time ago, and it's this brand. So this is the 111 skin. So just hearing that, like we're done. We have a hefty price tag on it. This is their antioxidant energizing essence. Do I really know how to use an essence? Not really. Hopefully I used it somewhat correctly. Um, at the beginning, I was kind of using it sporadically. But then it's like, it's skincare. It's going to go bad. I should use it up. So I tended to use this in the morning. And I would use it basically every morning. There's a hundred milliliters of item in here. So there's a lot, a lot that you're working through. And you can probably see at the bottom, like there's a tiny little bit that again, I cannot get out. It just, it will not come out. It's a good product. It seemed nice. Um, essences seem to be a bit more of kind of like an extra fancy kind of step. So it's fine. I do like the packaging easy from a project pan perspective. And you may notice if you see it here, I dropped this on bathroom tile. 
This is a glass bottle. And yes, it did ship. You could see it right there, but it didn't break. So this is pretty substantial packaging and the packaging is nice. It looks very pretty. When I started kind of tracking this, because I thought I had put it in a project pan. I had debated doing it in my skincare, but I decided not to. So you can kind of see brief little lines. So in January, I was here. So again, this is what I used up last year. This was the beginning of February. There was still a little bit beginning of March. Um, but yeah, so there, January, February. It didn't do very well. And because again, we were gone for a lot of it, but, but it's done. The price tag, again, it's 111 skin. That's all you need to know. It's super expensive. USD, $100. I remember that from way back when, when I picked the item in the first place. Like what the heck is worth $100 with it? Is it worth it? Probably not. It was an extra fun little step. And especially when you do the conversion. So the conversion that we're looking at, right, it's, I've got the exact number, but it's basically 140 bucks. It's 137.78 with conversion at this particular point. It's expensive. It was nice. I enjoyed it. Do I want to buy anything with this brand? No. No, because that's like way up there in price tag. But it was fun. Okay, long video long. Oh my goodness. If you're still here, thank you. I, I hope you're you're hanging in there. You're having some semblance of fun at least. So let's talk about this little pile of stuff I've got. As you can see, we had a lot of high ticket items, right? We had the $70 mask, the $115 serum, the $140 essence. So we have some big ticket items that are really like moving that price tag up. And again, a lot of those items, right, I was working on it as of last year. So it's not like this is all coming in in this year or definitely not this month. But all things added up when we're calculating, doing all of the math for all of this. The skincare came to a total of $432.91. So when we add everything on this table together, March, so what I did halfway through February to halfway in March, $556.91. Over the course of what I finished within that month. Which already, again, my mind is just, it's boggled. Boggled at just how expensive everything is. Um, especially when you do the conversion, right? That's going to add a lot more to the stuff. But for the year, plus some items that were in December, we are at a total of $1,277.03. Yeah. Yeah. Does that stress you guys out? It's stressing me out a little bit. And again, I'm not paying full price for this stuff. It's these things, it's gift with purchases from Sephora, it's BoxyCharm, it's uh, gifts you get for Christmas and birthday, and there's so many sources that you're buying the stuff on sale. Like, But we're mid, mid March, and we've already crossed $1,000. Like this value, and again, keep in mind that, that that's everything, so there's hair care added in there from previous months. This is all the retail values, all of that. But we're already at a value that's higher than some people's yearly empties. Which, again, a lot of these items, right? So I would say, obviously, things like the sunscreen, the lip products, the serum, this mask, 
uh, the balm, the eye balm, even the essence, the Smashbox primer, like those all had some good usage last year. So that's what's carrying into here. But again, still, okay. <sighs> Enough of me being shocked and surprised. I calculated that math yesterday and I'm still. But again, I'm not trying to waste anything, right? I am still trying to get good use out of all of these items that I'm using, the items that I'm currently using, the items in backlog. So I'm not just pushing things through just to get them done. Like I'm not just trying to use it up just to use it up. I don't want to waste items. I don't want to overuse items. But this is where we're at. So it's going to be, as I said last update, it's going to be extremely interesting for the end of the year to see where I get to. Because again, I do want to empty out a lot of my collection, right? I want to progress through makeup. I want to get that backlog of skincare whittled down. And I also want to play and experiment and try new things and take advantage of sales and put things on my wish list and get them as presents, hopefully. And so it's that constant struggle, right? So if, if you're a panner, and especially if you're someone who really focuses on minimalism, like that's amazing and wonderful. And I don't think I can quite get there, but I do want to be very considerate because again, the stuff all goes bad eventually. So you want to get good use out of it. You want to get your money's worth. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And that's where I'm at with my panning journey. So thank you so much for checking in, being with me for this ridiculously long, sorry, rambly day. Again, I do try to give little reviews along the way. So if you are interested in any of these products, like I'm just a regular average consumer, right? I have some knowledge of things, right? I'm, I'm dabbling in the skincare world a little bit, trying to learn as much as I can about some ingredients, but I'm no expert, right? That's not my job. I'm just an average person figuring out what I like best, playing with things and sharing some of my thoughts with you guys. But that's gonna bring us to the end of the video. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can see the next update because we're just built. I don't know if next month we're gonna be higher than that. Hopefully not because you know that's a lot of money, but we're gonna still progress. I've already finished some other things that we'll be featuring coming up in some project pans and then of course I'll be able to actually put them in the empties videos and so if you enjoy empties make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my next one if you enjoy project pan content so a lot of these things were rolled into projects make sure you're subscribed so you can actually see that progression not just the empty and here we are at the end and if you're interested in seeing where my collection goes I've got a haul video that I'm prepping for. I've got all my items down here on the floor. So we're going to be replenishing some stuff. Um, do they need to be replenished? Not yet. No. But it's that give and take, right? You have the hauls. You have the empties. So as long as there's still movement going on, we're okay. So if you also enjoy haul videos to see the new stuff I'm bringing in, make sure you subscribe because that one's going to be coming to my channel sometime this month. And I will see you guys in my next video very soon. Have a wonderful day.